Welcome to Our Savior's online worship opportunity, coming to you from the community of Jamaica, Queens, New York. I'm Julius Carroll, the interim lead pastor of this over 100 year congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. On this fifth Sunday at the Pentecost, we welcome everyone near and far. So please join me in our prayer of the day. O God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sun and storm. By your strength pilot us, by your power preserve us, by your wisdom instruct us, and by your hand protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please join me now in our opening hymn, House of the Lord. We worship the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea. Our God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout.
be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Last Wednesday, we celebrated Juneteenth, correct? Yes? Yes, June 19th, which commemorates the end of chattel slavery in the United States. This happened, if you, as you recall, when enslaved peoples in Texas learned from Union troops on June 19th, 1865, two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation, that they were free people. While Juneteenth is a holiday that we celebrate in the official end of slavery, it also points us to the ongoing work that remains to be done to bring about true racial justice and harmony in our land. Racism is still alive and well despite our Juneteenth celebrations. So let's face it, folks. We live in very challenging, stormy times, do we not? Divisions are everywhere, in politics, in the marketplace, even in our very homes. We hear the news how random violent crimes are spiking and we wonder, when will the next mass shooting take place or the next random stabbing occur? We watch as prices and taxes go up and up and up and we wonder, will my children be able to afford college or take out a mortgage? Will I be able to retire? What will happen if we get sick? How will we pay the bills? Our readings today speak to us of battles, calamities, raging storms, both in the human heart and the human community. All our readings speak to us of overwhelming hardships. Our alternative reading from the Old Testament today is a favorite of mine, the story of David and Goliath. Who remembers the story of David and Goliath? Yeah? David, a shepherd boy, encounters the mighty warrior, Goliath of God. Remember, the Goliath is the ultimate fighting machine, the heavyweight champion of the Philistines, ready to make mincemeat of the hapless Israelites. So what are David's skills so far? Tending and defending sheep, playing musical instruments, and writing poetry. If David crosses into enemy territory, with nothing more than his the stones and his shepherd's staff and a sling. And while Goliath was coming forward, David reached into his shepherd's bag, took out a stone, and swung it, striking the Philistine in the one, one vulnerable place, right here in his forehead. And Goliath, the mighty giant, is taken down by a mere stone. What enabled David to really win? David's words have been a rallying cry for us in our times of trials and tribulations. David said, the battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. Now we see this in the Gospel from Mark when Jesus and his disciples are crossing the, the sea and the storm grows up. And as they travel, a ferocious storm hits them and even though they're seasoned fishermen, they're used to this, but they are terrified by the viciousness of this, this storm that they find themselves in. And the boat, it says, is on the verge of sinking. And Jesus is what? He's asleep through it all. And they finally call out to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? We've been there too, have we not? In times of challenges, when our fear overwhelms our faith, Sometimes, when we are living through chaos, buffeted by the storms of life, confronted by the Goliaths of the world, it does feel like God has forgotten us. That Jesus has fallen asleep while we're fighting for our lives. And then we see, we feel the boat taking on water, the winds are whipping, and we're losing our balance. And we shout out, do you not care, Lord? Do you not care that my loved one is on the verge of death? Do you not care, Lord, that my bank account is almost empty? Do you not care, Lord, how alone I feel, how helpless I feel, how much confusion and despair I'm in? When the disciples 
disciples find the awakening and Jesus rebukes the wind immediately and says, peace, be still to the storm. Everything calms down and Jesus then rebukes his disciples and says, why are you afraid? Why do you still have no faith? The word is more actually like, why are you still comfortably? Jesus was with them. There was no way he was going to let them drown. In some ways, Jesus was teaching them the kind of faith they need when they are about to minister among different peoples in challenging times, challenging life today, a faith that needs to withstand hardship that comes from enduring endless injustice and division and pain and hardship to get to that other side of righteousness and justice and peace and faith. We need to make David's mantra our own. The battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. Both stories, the one about David and Goliath and this one about the storm on the lake, teach us about facing insurmountable challenges. And the text asks us, what giants are looming large in your life? An issue at work or school? An issue in a relationship? How do we overcome this fear-mongering, greedy, materialistic culture that, that, that is around us and yet stay rooted in faith? What has, what has enabled all the oppressed people, hurt people, to endure and stand up and demand healing, wholeness, peace, and justice? That's why holidays like Juneteenth, Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, Father's Day, Mother's Day, Memorial Day, July 4th, Pride Sunday next week are so important to celebrate because they remind us of the words and deeds of people of faith who have gone before us. How our ancestors have sacrificed for us. How to survive and thrive in adversity in the storms of life. They remind us whatever we're facing. What? That battle is the Lord's. You know, as we get closer to the Paris, Paris, the Paris Olympics, the end of July, let's, let's consider this. What athlete are you rooting for? I'm rooting for the GOAT, the greatest of all time, Simone Biles, the most decorated gymnast in history. Anybody with me on this? <laughs> yes. What makes her story so compelling? She says such a positive attitude. She's smile that is amazing. But yet Simone grew up in foster care because her mother had a drug problem. And her father did too. Her grandparents ended up adopting her and her sister. Her brother, Tevin Biles Thomas, was arrested on a triple homicide charge in connection to a fatal shooting at a New Year's Eve party, and the charges were later dropped because of insufficient evidence. Her sister Ashley also drug problems. She was sexually molested by one of her trusted coaches. She shocked the world when she withdrew from the 2020 Tokyo Games. You remember that? When she suffered the twisties, when, when the gymnasts can't find their, uh, lose their sense of place in midair. And she was outspoken that she took two years off from her, from her craft, from her, her sport, to, uh, to take care of her mental health and to go into therapy. And she has bounced back in here at 27. If she wins one more medal, she'll be the most decorated American gymnast. And she became the youngest person at age 25 to receive the Presidential Medal of the Freedom. She's a model of work for us, hard work for us, but no matter how hard we work, in the end, what? The battle is still the Lord's. Think of the sprinter, Allison Felix, who won more medals in track and field than any other woman. Ten-time national champion, combined Olympic and world championship total of 31 medals. Overall, the most decorated athlete in track and field history. Yet, she tells us about how on her loss at the games in Beijing, she saw it through the lens of faith. She said, sometimes God puts you through something in order for you to face something bigger in your life. 
there's a bigger picture. And a lot of times with faith, you don't get it in the moment. But then later, you see what's happened. God puts you through it. But ultimately, what? The battle is the Lord's. So, as we sit there with stones in hand against mighty Goliath of unfair decisions or being deliberately held back or pushed down, what do we remember as we prepare to cast our stones? The battle is the Lord's. When storms threaten your relationships and you feel the boat sinking, what do we remember? The battle is the Lord's. And when life throws afflictions or hardships, a calamity one after another, Jesus just seems to be sleeping through your trials, what does faith tell us to proclaim? The battle is the Lord's. And the war is won one day at a time, one battle at a time. So whatever problem you're dealing with today, whatever twisting you are encountering, whatever failure or loss or challenge, your life is dealt with. See the big picture. If God takes you to it, God will take you through it. The battle is the Lord's. God will be at your right hand in strength as you face your Goliath, as you slog through the storm. Through everything you face, God will not leave you to fight your battle alone. So say it with me. The battle is the Lord's. There is no way you can lose because our faithful and almighty God will see you through. Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing, Trading My Songs.
Let us now bow our heads and our hearts in a time of prayer. Calmer of the storms, you journey with us in times of trials and challenges. Heal our fears, equip us to move forward, even if our obstacles seem overwhelming and the storms threaten to engulf us. God, you are sovereign over all tempests, and in times of peace, speak your strong word of peace to the leaders of the world. We pray for all parts of the world facing scorching heat and drought or floods. As we still recall Juneteenth, may we remind ourselves of the sacred work to end racism in all of its forms and to continue to seek the emancipation of all peoples of the world. Amid the whirlwinds of division, violence, and conflict, remind us again that you are as steadfast as the foundation of the earth. Rejuvenate peacemakers, advocates, and community organizers when they feel weary of their work, especially those working with refugees and victims of war. Healer of the sick body, mind, and spirit, we lift up our siblings in Christ, Harry, Desmond, Walter, Cynthia, Esther, Dolores, Jean, Sabatry, Hannah, Ivy, and Jonathan. We pray for family, the family of Mr. Singh, observe the year anniversary of his death. And as we pray for them, we pray for those in our lives who stand in need of prayer. We lift them up to you on our lips or on our hearts. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid. Through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. O God, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Bow your heads and your hearts for the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. And so let us sing together our closing hymn, Shout to the Lord. The worship is ended. The service begins. Go in peace, love and serve the Lord. to pray.